was on the cabaret circuit for about 15 years um, and I decided to apply for Stars in Their Eyes. Not Starstruck, but Stars in Their Eyes. The original one with Matthew Kelly. And I said, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Anastasia. So I was Anastasia for about six years. And when you think about Anastasia's voice, to be left outside alone when it's cold out here, well, maybe you should know. <laughs> and all that sort of sound. It's very, very similar to you're simply the best, better than all the rest. So it sort of like started, Anastasia started morphing into Tina's vocal and everybody said to me, oh, you don't half sound like Tina when you, you sing. And I went, really? And I thought, well, oh, I don't know whether it could be as dynamic and as amazing as Tina Turner is. And I said, well, how about if I bring a flavour of Tina to a show, I celebrate her music with her fans, and I, I, I do it that way, um, because I'm not as skinny as her. <laughs> and um, I thought, okay, this, this might work. So we enlisted um, a band, and we enlisted a load of dancers, and we spent, well, the next six years desperately trying to create a show and trying to show it to everybody. And um, hopefully all the Tina fans were going to be absolutely thrilled with this. As I say, we're celebrating her music to her fans. And at the end of the day, there's always going to, only going to be ever one Tina Turner. And I'm not there to replace her or even to sort of impersonate her, even though I am doing that to a degree. It's about celebrating her music. And I remember her saying to Adrian Warren on her interview, the lady who... Um, portrayed her in the musical she said don't try to be me on stage she said bring a flavor of me so i've always remembered that now i've got quite long legs um and i'm <laughs> as you can see the hair is quite similar this isn't a wig this is actually my hair it used to be dark black curly hair but lockdown decided to treat me to some gray so i decided to put the blonde in and before you knew it it just looked exactly like my wig <laughs> without meaning to and I mean, it's me standing there on stage and I let everybody know, hi there, we've got any fans of Tina Turner in. We're here to celebrate her life and her music. And all the way through it, there's little tiny flashes of me being comedic. And um, there's lots of custom made costumes and custom things that Tina possibly hasn't ever done. Because when we looked at a lot of her footage, I thought, I don't just want to be a carbon copy of her. I want to think if Tina was about to go back and do another concert like next year, then how would she do Goldeneye? How would she do? We don't need another hero. Would she make it different to her other concerts? Which of course she would. And it lets us as artists in our own right to be a little bit creative whilst we're also paying homage to her. I dance, I dance for money. Do what you want me to do. I'm just your private dancer. I dance for money, and any music will do. The word tribute used to mean paying tribute to somebody. So you could stand there, well, I could stand there as a, a female singing the drifters all night long if I wanted to. And that's what it used to mean. But then Stars in the Rise came along, and that was still really about the voice rather than the look. And then Starstruck's now come on. And as we know now, it's more about the voice, because as we've watched from all the different shows that have happened over the last four or five um, weeks watching Starstruck. You can have all sorts of different people impersonating lots of different artists. And it is about the tone of voice and bringing the flavor of that person to it. If you want the actual artist themselves, then if they're still alive and you're lucky enough, then go and see the actual artist. Some people can't afford that. Sometimes the artist has already passed on. So it's nice to be able to remember their music and for bands to be able to create it. And don't get me wrong, I've had loads of people say to me, well, why do you want to be somebody else? Why don't you just be yourself? Well, first of all, I have been myself for an awful long time. And it is quite hard when you're getting nowhere and you think, okay, what can I do? And I just wanted to create a wonderful theatrical extravaganza. I wanted to create fire and sparkly costumes and dynamic dance routines, great video footage. 
And the best person I could think to pe- put all that towards was the queen of rock and soul. She just matches perfectly to what I wanted to do. I mean, I could take out all of the Tina songs and I could put in thousands of other things with all the costumes and the video footage of different characters and we could make it just a soul and Motown show. But at the end of the day, I don't think it'd be as much fun. <laughs> it's Tina. People noticed how hard that we'd worked very early on. And luckily now there is a ton of not only my friends and, and colleagues who work in the same business that are putting themselves up to the same level. And they are working extremely hard and spending a lot of time, effort and money on making their, their homage to whoever character they've chosen to be the best possibly. And that means a lot to me because I know that we were one of the ones to, to start it as a big production show. There was lots of tributes around before us, but no, not, not many people had taken girls and boys and lots of theatrical costumes and video footage and da- dynamic dance routines and tried to pay tribute to people. And uh, for me, it's, it's, it's lovely to be able to be rewarded with those sorts of, th- sorts of things. But at the end of the day, the biggest reward is the audience. If the audience likes what we do, then we carry on doing it. You can have a, a team of awards behind you saying, that, oh, you're the best, you're the best, you're the best. But it's, it's, it's your customers that are going to tell you whether you're doing it right or not. Because we're not a ginormous production company with private jets and, and hair, hair makeup artists. We do everything in-house ourselves to keep costs down. So for, for me, it's literally 24 hours a day. If I'm, when I'm sleeping, I'm thinking about it. And when I get up, I'm just working on the show. That could be editing lights, or it could be fixing costumes, or it could be washing the costumes from the week that's just happened. If I was completely and utterly honest, I'd, I'd still love some recognition in my, in my own right. But that's getting harder and harder because the more, not just that you sing as a cabaret vocalist, when I was a cabaret vocalist, you try to mimic a style. So if you're doing country, you mimic a country voice. Then you mimic something from a musical. Then you mimic, not necessarily an artist, each character like Joe Longthorn, but you mimic a style. So you get to the point after about 20 years of doing it, that you don't quite know what your voice is. And now, um, my voice, I, I don't quite know what my voice is anymore because I'm so used to um, singing every song with, with this gruff, um, power, solely grit to it, which sometimes can actually take it out on me because it's not, it's not a natural thing for me. Just the way her movements isn't a natural thing. It's not naturally the way I dance. So I'd have to twist my body. And the, the worst thing that me and the cast always have is Tina Whiplash. From all, from all the, hang on, take me glasses off for this because they'll go flying. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so when, once you've got that happening, like four or five nights a week, you, the pain that you wake up in the back of your neck. <laughs> so I've had to let my, my voice and my body remember how to do all this. And when I've sang a, a song, a normal cabaret song, I find myself bah, 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 slightly doing the Tina moves. And you go, I only wanna be with you. You can't sing, I only want to be with you anymore. It just sn- slips in all the time. strange because after about 10 years worth of, of, of really hitting the show hard and all the stresses of, of things that naturally happen in your life with cast members and also myself and um, I, I was so busy and I, I felt like I, I met myself coming back and I was constantly on a spinning place that just never ever stopped so lockdown for me the first three months was like oh wow I get to stop for a minute Oh, this is actually quite pleasant. There's no flights, there's no packing bags, there's no washing. The, all the all the costumes that needed repair, I thought, right, I can start them. And then the longer it went on, the more sort of itchy you got to get back on stage. But how I covered it was, you can go onto our U- YouTube channel, Totally Tina UK, and um, you will see on lockdown videos, every Monday night, I decided to start doing Tina songs and I'd make them different ones every single week until we'd gone through every song that's in my catalogue. I also threw in some Anastasia and I threw a couple of nights in as just myself. Some with my guitarist when we were allowed one person in your house. Some in the garden with the dancers when we were allowed to meet up as a six. So we've got 10 videos there, 45 minutes long of me and uh, my cast 
doing all lockdown things. We did funny videos. We did when Strictly did their uh, their dance off. We did a dance off as well, and we did our very first t um, Tina video from lockdown. I said to everybody, record yourself singing this line to Simply the Best, and I want you. In, in, in totally Tina logo or doing something lockdownish, and we called it totally quarantina. And I started off in the garden, um, hedge cutting the hedge, then I'm polishing the tables, then I'm getting the shopping from the car, fully dressed up as Tina. My neighbors must have thought I was a crazy woman, dressed up in the hero outfit, getting out the car with two bags. So we did that as a video and that started the role of really being creative with videos. It also gave us an opportunity to look back at some of the covers, which is where we created the rock medley. And we also created another little medley using Hold On, I'm Coming from Sam and Dave and heard it through the grapevine from her 24 seven tour. So we created some really nice videos, some great ideas for costumes. And we knew when we came back that it was gonna be bad. Totally Tina are back with a of a Tina concert. I always feel like there's, a, there's an affinity between um, Liverpool, Scotland, Newcastle and Wales. <laughs> I think we're all, we're all, somebody said to me the other day, um, was it Celts that swim? <laughs> Something like that. And I thought, oh, that's quite a good analogy. Yeah, the, the Welsh are just crazy. We've got some amazing fans down there. We've got a special lady called Gloria Lee and um, she comes to see us whenever we're, we're down south with her. And she is a grandma. And she gave me a ton of Tina albums, proper original albums for me to display in my room. And every year she sends me like a little Christmas present and slippers. And she's even made us some proper Welsh cakes. Every time we go down there, she makes us some Welsh cakes. <laughs> You're slipping out. Ah! Get ready to shake your tail feathers with the queen of rock and roll.